Hello, everybody. There's a saying going around that I, I've seen a lot of people start using a lot. And it's the hill I'm going to die on. Or the hill they're going to die on. This is the hill they've chosen to die on. So it's like, sort of like defending a fort in a way. You, you found the most defensive position, which is a hill. That's how it works strategically. If you have the, if you have the high ground, you have the upper hand. And it's very easy to defend the high ground uh, and that hill is symbolic of something you really believe in, something you feel very deeply about, a deeply held conviction. But it's an interesting uh, saying because of the, the time we're in now. Everybody's picking the hill they want, they want to die on. And that's that's okay. It's it's good because it helps to delineate things. You can sort of um, discriminate. It's a really good thing. I, I always think of like the third line in human design. Or even the third tone. Basically, at the tip of leftness, moving into rightness. Because that's how you can kind of look at the three moving into the four, that's how you can kind of look at it, even on the level of line. You could think of it as like the tip of leftness moving into rightness. And that's sort of like where civilization itself is moving. We're at the tippy tip of leftness moving into rightness. Now, it's interesting because there's a lot of defensive positions being rallied in terms of how so many have interpreted their own experience of that left-oriented world. Now, what is that left-oriented world? Very separated. It's based on security, needing security. Needing to secure the, your your foundational understanding of things and having other people be in, be in alignment with that. But within all of that, it's kind of like a, there's an isolating quality to it, which has a lot to do with the culture of isolation that's within our, our current civilization with um, how we're using technology, how we're using media, there's a very isolating quality to it. So, yeah, it's really individual. It's really, like, kind of isolating. Everybody has their little space. They have all this stuff. They, they can just kind of be lost in their own world if they want. But we're uh, at the tip of that. We're at the very tip of that kind of thing. Because what's happening is there is a shared essence that's coming up. Now... The way, when you think about like the three moving into the four, the three is always on the lookout for bullshit. It doesn't want certain things passing into a transpersonal collective reality. It's, it's always on the lookout for the virus and it wants to kill the virus. Kind of like what your liver does or your, uh, your immune system. That's kind of like what lower, lower, uh, colors are or left tones or lower lines or the spleen on the body graph or even the you know the g center all that is very left oriented there's there's a lot of leftness about it and it, it there's there's uh, it's very much concerning separation of things you have to separate things not everything is all one you know how everybody's saying that the spiritual kind of spiritual kind of uh solipsism it's all one it's all the same it doesn't matter it's all just you know but that's kind of like an uncritical rightness that isn't very well integrated with the left that's kind of like just 
abandoning, your, abandoning yourself to a, a kind of rightness, a kind of upper trigram, a kind of solar plexus reality that is very ungrounded, kind of wishy-washy, sort of all over the place. You're just saying, yeah, it's all the same anyway. We're all one. It's all spiritual. Blah, blah. But the, the thing about the left and the right, the lower and the upper trigrams, everything like that, left and right tones, is that there's an integrating, there's an integration. And that integration is really about the dividing line between them. Now, what is that dividing line? I've talked about this in certain videos. That dividing line is like on the level of tone. It's that dividing line between the left and right, between the third and fourth tones, between the ash and a binary. You could think of it, you could think about this in a lot of ways, okay? You, like third eye, you know, central, pineal gland, all that kind of thing, but it's, it goes deeper than that. It's individual circuitry. It's very much individual circuitry, but there's a thing about individual circuitry that's like a balance between the left and the right. Yes, there is an element of it that is more left because the spleen it has the spleen is directly connected to the G center, and the G center has all these gates that are the openers for their uh, respective lower trigrams. And I, I, you know, I have to kind of show you, but people who are really familiar with the system will know what I'm talking about. Um, so there is a, there's a lot of leftness with individuality, but. In, in terms of the experiential, which is more upper trigram, more fourth line, more solar plexus, you know, all that. Um, that, that needs to be integrated with the individual. Now, if you're saying it doesn't matter that you're an individual and, and it, all that matters is your group identity and all that kind of thing, and where, what are we seeing a lot of that of? I mean, where, are, aren't we seeing a lot of that in the world? Hmm. Your individual merits don't matter. Your individual character doesn't matter. What matters is what your race is. What matters is what your group is, your group identity. It doesn't matter who you are as an individual. It only matters what your label is and how you can label yourself. And so there's real, there, there's so much, there, there's like such an unintegrated kind of twisted mangled mess with this transition and I think it's it's it very much is it does have to do with this off-world presence that's trying to uh, wedge itself in between our own integration between leftness and rightness but with this tran this grand transition we're going through you know being at the pinnacle of leftness getting into a kind of rightness a kind of shared essence there is a presence very much that is trying to wedge itself in that process and to sort of disempower, disarm the, the human experience of that, to, to make it less potent, to make it less aware of itself, to make it just kind of blah, you know? And w one way it's doing that is like, two things, getting rid of the contrast, saying it, it doesn't matter, everything's the same, and then also, on the other hand, is creating meta-contrast, hyper-contrast, intractable conflict between sides that can never be resolved. So you see these two things taking place. These two things. Oh, gender doesn't matter, it's all the same or we're all one, and you see all this solipsism and all this kind of like pleasure seeking and, um, you know, reality isn't real and all this kind of unreal insanity where it's like, um, it's all just in your head and all you need, you, you just need to seek pleasure. That's the meaning of existence. Just seek pleasure, indulge your indulgences, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's it. That's all you need to do. And beyond that, fuck the world, fuck other people, and a lot of people are really falling into that mindset, man. But then you have the other side, which is like hyper just vigilance in terms of being against things and against 
uh, people, and there's there's a lot of conflict being actually invented and inflamed purposely for that reason. Um, I mean, the media the media has been caught doing this over and over and over so many times, man. So many times. But what would it look like just to have a, a true, authentic experience of integration between the left and the right? What, what would that be? Well, it would mean you are very grounded in yourself as an individual. Very grounded in yourself as an individual in that splenic, G-center, lower trigram, left tones, lower color kind of way. It doesn't matter what your configurations are. You are very grounded as an individual. But coming into contact with the rightness through a kind of uh, quantum or non-linear, non-local, experiential realm, which is when the three, you could say that's like, in, in speaking of line, that's when the three is crossing over into the four. It crosses that borderline deeply experiential. Now, there's a lot of things in that that's like paradoxical. Yes, you're still an individual, but you ex you experience a kind of greater mind. There's a greater mind that you're starting to experience and use and feel and know. And it's interesting because that dividing line, like in, uh, in terms of the body graph with the uh, the knowing circuit. It's called the knowing circuit. Individual circuitry. The, the, the central part of that is the knowing circuit. And it is a kind of knowing. It's deeply experiential. It's a kind of knowledge that is not just left-oriented knowledge. It's not just like separating things. Oh, you call that that because, you know, yeah. We, we have to, you know, bioavailable iron and spinach is not the same thing as mercury. It's just not. So with our left-oriented awareness, we can delineate things. We can say, this is not that, and my left foot is not my right foot. I mean, it's the foundation of science. It's the foundation of a lot of things. But it's also a foundation for spiritual discernment, being very grounded in your experience, being able to tell the difference between things and being very discerning. But when you're... when you're, it, so you're not a solipsist. That's what, that's what I'm saying there. You're not a solipsist. So you're deeply grounded. You're very aware. But you also realize that there is an element of the paradoxical and the mysteriousness of life. There is a mystery with a capital M that you're exploring with your individual nature here. And a lot of that does have to do with like shedding ideas you have about your individuality. That one of them is the idea that this is your true self or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful expression. You get to use this vehicle for a limited amount of time. It's basically a loner. You get to experience it, but it's so incredibly temporary compared to eternity. It's so time-bound, form-bound, very left again, very left-oriented. Now, that's all good and great, but your consciousness is, you know, the, the part of you that's beyond form and beyond time, that is eternal, that is a really, really important thing to get in touch with, and a, the path to that, in terms of like with with the human design, is that rightness, is the rightness. It's very deeply experiential. It's moving into that solar plexus awareness. The solar plexus does not have a direct connection to the G center. It's not about you. Right? It's not about you and your direction and your preferences and your likes and dislikes and you, 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 you know, that's all left. That's all individual. That's all, you know, that's all great. But there's something else. There's a greater mind. There's a greater reality. And it's deeply spiritual as well. Yes, you can have some, a certain kind of spirituality and leftness, but when you're looking at rightness, 
solar plexus gates, Pisces, okay? All that kind of thing. That, that's, that's getting into a very deeply spiritual awareness. There's so much there, like compassion, a shared essence, you know, a greater mind. And this is just really something important to think about.